the actions. To start with, a physical change is any change that will be changing the size of matter, the shape, or the state of matter, but without changing its identity. Because once you change the identity of the substance, it will be considered as a chemical change. So physical changes, examples like crushing a can, melting ice cubes, boiling water, and others. In all of these examples, the we are not changing the identity of the substance. Then where do new substances come from? They come from a chemical change. So chemical changes are also known as chemical reactions. When you are changing the identity of the substance or producing new substances, you are making a chemical change or a chemical reaction. Example, the formation of water, H2O, it can be done by reacting H2 gas and O2 gas. So this is considered as a chemical reaction or a chemical change because we are making a new substance which is water in the liquid state. So a physical change example, cutting wood, chemical change is burning wood that will be eventually turning into ash. So we are changing the identity of the wood by changing into ash. When atoms attach to other atoms, they will be forming a chemical bond. So what is a chemical bond? It's the force that will be holding atoms together. When you are forming a new chemical bond or breaking a chemical bond, you are changing the chemical property of the substance. As an example, when you are burning charcoal, the new bonds will be formed between atoms of carbon and molecules of oxygen from the air producing a new substance which is CO2, carbon dioxide. Another example is the formation of salt, table salt which is known as NaCl. When you are forming salt, NaCl, it is because of the reaction between chlorine gas and sodium metal. So when sodium reacts with the chlorine gas, it will be giving sodium chloride, which is known as table salt. More examples, the formation of water. Water is formed by a chemical reaction between hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. So a chemical change is a change that is done between two different substances to make a new substance with different properties. The science of a chemical change in order to know that we do have a chemical change or a chemical reaction, we'll be seeing bubbles, which is gas formation. It will be releasing heat or light. And later we'll be talking about the types of reactions, endothermic or exothermic precipitate formation, which will be settling out at the bottom, and the change in color. Hence, the change in color only alone doesn't mean that we do have a chemical change all the time. We might have a color change, but it would be a physical change. So some wordings used for chemical changes like rotten, rust, burn, explode, spoiled, or baking, all of these wording means that we do have a chemical a change. Again, because we are changing the identity of the substance, we are not keeping the same chemical properties. What are the parts of a chemical reaction? A chemical reaction, we said, it is also known as a chemical reaction. So, chemical change or chemical reaction means the same. The parts of the chemical reaction are two. We have the reactants and the products. They are separated by an arrow, means to yield to these products. So the reactants are the substances that are present before any chemical change, whereas the products, they are substances that are produced after a chemical change. 
Together, reactants and products can be represented by a chemical equation. A chemical change can be represented by a chemical equation. Consider the following example. When you are burning propane, C3H8, in the presence of oxygen, so I have to combine this or to react propane with O2 gas to produce, to produce means to give. So I'll be drawing the arrow to produce water, which is H2O plus carbon dioxide, which is CO2. So the products in the following reaction are H2O and CO2. So those are the products. And the reactants are the following C3H8 and oxygen gas. So those are the reactants. What are the parts of a chemical change? So again, any chemical change or reaction, we have reactants on one side and we have products on the other side. Together, they will make a chemical equation. What is the law of conservation of mass? Law of conservation of mass states that the amount of mass on the reactant side should be equal to that on the product side. So matter is not created nor destroyed during chemical reaction. So that's why we'll be following the law of conservation of mass as shown in the following example. When sulfur and iron react with each other, it will make a new substance which is iron sulfide, FES. If I want to consider the amount of mass in the reactant side for sulfur, 32 grams, and 56 grams for iron, so I will be expecting to have 80, 80 grams on the product side because 32 plus 56 will give you 80, 80 grams. So when the number or the amount of mass on the reactant side is equal to that of the product side, we say that the mass is conserved. Another example, when you have lead and sulfur to give you lead sulfide, similarly, as in the previous example, if you have 10 grams of lead reacting with 1.56 grams of sulfur, this will give you 11.56 grams of lead sulfide. So, obviously, that the product mass will be equal to the reactant's mass. Chemical equations show this conservation. Always, always, the same elements will be present on both sides of a chemical equation. As an example, if you look at the reactants and the products, we can see that they are the same elements that are present on both sides. We have on the reactant side CA and we have on the product side in calcium chloride also CA. We have chlorine gas on the reactant side, and the same we do have it in that product, which is calcium chloride. The same number of atoms of each element must appear on both sides as well. As an example, the number of atoms for calcium here is one. The number of atoms for chlorine is two. So if I want to check that on the product side to see if we have the same number of atoms, we also have here one calcium atom, to two chlorine atom, so they are balanced. To balance a chemical equation, first of all, we have to count the number of atoms of each element on both sides. And I have to add a number to the left side of the substance, which is known as a subscript. Leave the atom that exists in the two substances as the last. Do not change the subscript, because by changing the subscript, you will be changing the substance itself. To consider, consider the following example, hydrogen gas and oxygen gas will react to produce water. Hydrogen gas, H2, plus oxygen gas, O2, it will react to produce water, which is H2O. The first step in balancing the following chemical equation is to know what are the elements that are present on both sides. On the reactant side, we have hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Also on the product side, we have hydrogen gas and oxygen gas present in the water. 
how many atoms do we have in hydrogen gas? We have two atoms here, and we have for the oxygen as well two atoms. On the other side, on the product side, we have two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. If you compare hydrogen on both sides, it is balanced. We have on both sides two atoms, whereas oxygen is not balanced. We should have here two atoms instead of one atom. So what do we do? We simply multiply by a coefficient, which is two. But my, by multiplying by that coefficient, we'll be changing the hydrogen to be four atoms now, and the oxygen will become two atoms. Then I will go back to the reactant side to compare again the number of atoms for each element. The number of atoms for hydrogen here is four, and on the reactant side, it should be now four atoms. So I will be again multiplying by the, that coefficient before hydrogen to change it from two atoms into four atoms. And if you look at the oxygen atom, it's, uh, they are balanced. So the difference between a subscript and coefficient, the coefficient will be written before the substance itself, whereas the subscript, it's just under the element itself to tell how many atoms are present for that element. To balance this following chemical equation, if you have N2 plus H2 to give you NH3 ammonia. So the same thing, we have N and we have H on the reactant side, they are also the same elements present on the product side. We have two atoms of nitrogen. On the product side, we have one atom. We have two hydrogen atoms on the reactant side, uh, but we have three atoms of hydrogen on the product side. To balance the following equation, we have to start with the nitrogen, which is not balanced. So we have to multiply here by a subscript to that will be changing the nitrogen atoms into two and the hydrogen atoms into six instead of three. We'll go back to the reactant side. The nitrogen atoms are balanced, whereas the hydrogen atoms are not. So that's why we have to multiply by three in order to have six atoms of hydrogen. And like this, we'll be having a balanced equation. The types of chemical reactions, they are five major types of chemical reactions. The synthesis reaction, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, and combustion reaction. Synthesis reaction, it has a general equation of A plus B to give AB. A simple example about that is the formation of sodium chloride. When you are forming NaCl, it is because you are reacting Na plus Cl2. So it's just like A plus B to give AB, one complex compound. So in a synthesis reaction, it's a reaction between two elements, or it can be two compounds, but it will be forming one single complex product. The decomposition A decomposition reaction is a reaction that will be decomposing or breaking down a complex compound, AB, into A plus B. So it's just the opposite of synthesis. So if I want to consider the same example there, I will be writing NaCl, sodium chloride. It will be broken down into Na plus Cl2. So this is the decomposition reaction. Single replacement reaction, it has a general equation of AB plus C to give A plus CB. In a single replacement reaction, it is a reaction between a compound and an element to give new other substances by having one element switching the place 
of another element in the other compound. In a double replacement reaction, it should be a reaction between two compounds in the form of AB plus CD to give you AD plus CB. So if you notice here, whenever we have a double replacement reaction, the far element will be reacting with the far and the near with the near to make new substances. So in this case, in the double replacement reaction, we are switching places between two elements in these compounds. A combustion reaction It's a reaction where oxygen gas is a main reactant and we'll be talk talking about the following only one type of combustion reactions which is the reaction of oxygen gas with a hydrocarbon such as CH4, methane gas. So when a methane gas is burned in the presence of oxygen it will give CO2, H2O and energy. So it will be giving you the following products. So to start with again, the major type of chemical reactions, one more time, synthesis reaction. It occurs between two substances to form one new complex substance in the form of A plus B to give AB. Just like the formation of salt or the formation of water as well. The opposite of that is decomposition reaction. In a decomposition reaction, we will start with one complex compound that will be broken down into two or more than two simpler substances, just like the AB to give A plus B. Examples on this is the electrolysis of water, or we also call it hydrolysis. So electrolysis of water or electrolysis of sodium chloride will be breaking down this complex substance which is the water or the sodium chloride into H2 and O2 and into Na and Cl2 in electrolysis of NaCl. In these types of reaction, a decomposition reaction, it requires energy to break the bond between hydrogen and oxygen. To, to break the bond between hydrogen and oxygen, this requires energy, so that's why we consider it as an endothermic reaction, because it needs energy. Single replacement reaction, it has a general equation of AB plus C to give you AB plus BC. So you are here only replacing one element by another in the compound to produce a new element and a new compound. Example, zinc, copper sulfate to give you copper and zinc sulfate. So in the following example, we have A plus BC to give you B plus CA. Double replacement reaction, general equation is AB or AD plus BC to give you AC plus BD. In the following equation, you are just replacing or switching the places between two elements in the following two compounds. Combustion reaction again, it's a reaction between a gas such as uh, methane gas, a hydrocarbon, and an oxygen gas to give CO2, H2O. To state the type of chemical reaction, let's practice this together. In the following, in A, we have CuO plus C to give you Cu plus CO2. So it's in the form of AB plus C to give you A plus CB. So it's a single replacement reaction. In the second part, you are having one complex compound that's broken down into two different compounds. So this is what it is, a type of reaction which is known as decomposition reaction. You are because you are breaking down a complex compound into simpler substances. In C, you have the form of AB plus CD to give you AD plus CB. So it is 
a double replacement reaction where two elements are switching their places in the two compounds. When oxygen gas, in part D, when oxygen gas is one of the main reactants reacting with a hydrocarbon, like methane gas, this will give you CO2, H2O, plus energy. So because a combustion reaction releases energy, gives energy, which is a sign of a chemical reaction as well, it is an exothermic reaction. And the last example, it's also formation of a complex substance, LiOH, from two different compounds. So because you are synthesizing or making a new substance on the product side and we are making one single compound, then this is called a synthesis reaction. The factors that will be changing or influencing the reaction rate are the following. Surface area, concentration, temperature and pressure. The effect of temperature, when you are increasing the temperature, this will cause the particles to move faster and faster and therefore reacting or colliding with each other faster and thus having a faster reaction. Number two, the effect of concentration. When you are adding more reactants, this will also increase the concentration and thus increase the reaction rate because the collision between the particles will be faster. So higher concentration means faster reaction. Number three, effect of the surface area. When solids take part in a chemical reaction, only the surface particles will be exposed. So these only will be colliding with other particles and other reactants. So if you break down this and increase the surface area to have a larger surface area, you will be having more particles being exposed to the other particles in that reaction and therefore the reaction will be faster. Number four, the effect of pressure. When you increase the pressure, when you increase the pressure, as in that figure, this will force a greater number of particles to have smaller area and thus increasing the rate of the reaction as well. So higher pressure means faster reaction. So all of these factors will be directly proportional to the rate of the reaction, whether I'm adding the concentration of the reactants, increasing temperature, increasing the pressure, and increasing the surface area. Many chemical reactions need energy, and some other reactions, they release energy. Those reactions that release energy, or such as heat, light, or sound, they are known as exothermic reactions. A very simple example about that is respiration. Respiration is the release of energy from food. So when you are taking food, when you are eating that food, you are releasing energy uh, in a chemical reaction known as respiration. On the other side, when a reaction absorbs energy, this is called endothermic reaction. Example on this is photosynthesis. Photosynthesis reaction requires energy to convert CO2, H2O into glucose and oxygen gas. So it, it, ne it needs energy, light energy. And then the exothermic reaction example is cellular respiration. That will be releasing energy from the food. So energy unit, usually it's represented or measured in joules. This is an example of an endothermic reaction that will be converting the carbon dioxide and water from the soil into oxygen gas and food that will be used by the plant body. Classify the following reactions as endothermic or exothermic. Decomposition reactions, as we said previously, is a reaction that will be breaking down a complex compound is just like when you are breaking, when you need to break, let's say, a big rock into smaller pieces. You need to put energy, so it is an endothermic reaction. Similarly, 
decomposition of sodium chloride and water uh, that we mentioned before, they need energy and thus they are endothermic reaction. When you have energy on the reactant side, this means that it requires energy or it needs energy, then it is endothermic reaction. On the other hand, burning of methane is a combustion reaction that will be releasing heat energy and that's why it is an exothermic reaction. Thank you.